This is the first real episode. Yeah, and it's still a fucking clusterfuck of technical hey, we've messes. Hey, got, we've got prompt deck here. I know, we've even got a script, we've got notes. We've actually planned this one, which is nice. Well, briefly planned. It was a bit of a last minute a bit job. bit of a last minute job. Hello and welcome to episode number six of Through the Groove. Today we're doing something quite special. Kind of uh, special. Kind of special. Tomorrow is the the revealing of the winner of the... Hyundai Music... Music... Mu- <laughs> wow. The Hyundai Mercury Prize 2018 is being revealed tomorrow. I focus so much on trying to say Hyundai correctly yeah, you, that you I forgot. couldn't say Mercury. And uh, what are we going to be doing now? Um, so, we are going to be discussing the prestigious music prize known as the Mercury which celebrates the best, apparently, of the best of the British music acts from the last year. However, the deadline keeps getting earlier and earlier and earlier and it's fucking stupid and can't be dealing with it. Yeah, it is weird that it's September. Yeah. yeah. It used to be like November. Uh, I'm sure the nominations came out like... August. They announced the nominations in August, eight months into 2018. Yeah. It's stupid. And the cut-off... For the start date for this last year was August last year, but wasn't really August. There was like a weird like window. So actually, some artists didn't caught, get a look in. Yeah. Poor bastards. So we've taken six albums each. Some of the albums we already knew very well, very big fans of. But you know, we thought we should, seeing as though these are the twelve best albums of the last twelve months, give at least them all a listen. Randomly picked as well. Randomly picked in a hat. Daryl's got some scrappy bits of paper somewhere. Um, yeah, we, we had six randomly picked ones each. Cause we did some swapping, but we've got, we've got our we six were albums each. One swap. But now we've got yeah. our six each. We're ready to critique them. But first, can we have a little description of what the Mercury Prize is from the Mercury Prize website? Directly ripped straight off. Quote, disclaimer, whatever you want to say. This year's Hyundai Music Prize celebrates albums by musicians at all stages of their career. But with shared beliefs and importance of music for navigating life challenges, whether personal, political, falling in or out of love, growing up, looking back angry or ecstatic. God, there are any very limited emotions. The music here (laughs) is fun, inspiring, smart and moving. 12 amazing albums. So these 12 albums enco- encompass personal growth, life challenges. There are some debut albums in there. There are some long-standing, you know, veterans, I suppose they are now. And they're all amazing, uh, apparently. Supposedly. So on to the first album. I'll go first. The first amazing album. You're ready to rip the shit out of this. Novelist. Has uh, anyone heard of that? The, the artist Novelist with Novelist Guy. Basically, it's a bit shit. It's. I don't like it at all. It's. It's the grime version, the like kind of mono, of that monotone American rap music that's going around right now. That that post Malone, ASAP Rocky kind of music. You know that yeah. mumble rap, or trap don't... music, whatever you want to yeah. call it. It's utter horseshit, in my opinion, personally. I, yeah. it, and with with this album, novelist isn't really saying much. It's very repetitive. It's unnecessarily long, and kind of predictable with the songs that he's doing. Every every single song has a hook or a chorus where he's just saying the same things over and over again. Like there's one song called Wait, 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 where all he does is go, wait, 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 <laughs> wait for your birthday. Cake, 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 <laughs> cake. <laughs> no! And then the next bit is, wait, 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 <laughs> for your birthday, cake, 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 cake. Five minutes. Every song is about five minutes long. I got five no. songs into this album and it took me about 30 minutes to get five songs in. And I was dead with it. I was just so over it. Um, ultimately, it's just a to me, it's a boring album. But I think what it is, it's the it's the token grime act. Yeah. Because there's not been really a big grime act like Jay Huss this year. Yeah. It's been popular. Or I'm not Storm- or Stormzy the year before or Skepta. Skepta. Um, there's not really been a big popular grime act. Yeah, it's kind of fizzled down a little bit, I suppose. It's. Uh... And I can see why this is in the Mercury Prize as well because. Even though I have kind of bashed it a little bit, I do give him credit for being a little bit experimental with it. It is kind of grime music, but with a bit of a twist on it. Yeah. Which I think might be a theme with a lot of the albums this year. Like, they're kind of traditional things that they've tried something new with. God. Yeah, I think this is like a very, like, deep-cut grime album, and you yeah. need to be in with the grime scene and be 
a we, fan of we, that. We just kind of dance on the cusp of it, really. We don't really yeah. delve deep. Yeah, no. I, 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 chart, I, I personally yeah. think that Grime and the, Ameri- the American version of Grime, which I believe to be mumble rap and trap music. <laughs> I like that, mumble rap. Mumble rap. That's literally what it is because you can't tell what they're saying. I think they are an absolute shit show and are um, kind of like disrespectful to hip-hop, personally. Because yeah. I, I think they've taken the hip-hop genre and just destroyed it. But anyway, on that cheery note... Bad move, novelist guy. Fucking idiot. What's your first album? Um, I'm going to go with one that I didn't think I'd like and I was a bit like, oh God, why have I got this one? So everything is recorded. So I've never bloody heard of everything is recorded and there's good reason for that because it is, um, from what I can gather, a, a project that Richard Russell, who is a producer, has done and it's like all the best bits like from XL Records, so it's had like um, last year's Make You Prize winner Sanfers on there a good couple of times. You've got Gigs, you've got Damon Arban, Mark Bronson, and Ibi 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 Ibi. It sounds like an African animal. It like, does. Like a capybara. <laughs> Ibi. I know. Yeah. I know. Who you I mean capybaras? Th- is it female artist that Ibi? Really, really nice vocals. I think. Oh, and I didn't know what to expect from this. So I just saw the front cover. It's literally yellow. It's boring as fuck um but then you start listening to music but what's good about it it's kind of like a compilation um with all the different artists on that you kind of get a a little bit of everything like it's like the best bits of xl records Mm -hmm. which is kind of cool obviously i'm a really big fan of the ones with samphor on i think they're really strong his vocals are obviously sensational and then because you've got different artists you've got gigs on there as well you get a bit of that kind of like hip-hoppy kind of rap yeah aesthetic to it so as well so it's a bit a bit of everything in one which kind of makes sense for like this musical journey career changing experimental because he literally has done that he's took <coughs> the best artists on that record label is that a label that he uh, heads up as well yeah yeah um and there's produced an album yeah uh, so, but he's had a lot of creative input, so he's obviously written a lot of the music as well, and then they've come and featured mm. on it, which is cool. And he's produced a lot of their albums that are on his record, yeah. hasn't he? Yeah. Mm. So is this kind of like, because um, what's the album called? Everything is Recorded is the band. Uh, the album is called Everything is Recorded by Richard Russell. Yeah, which is, which is the person the producer, who's, basically. Yeah. yeah. So is it kind of like... It's like a self title kind of thing yeah sort isn't of it? it's yeah. quite clever i like it so is this so would you say this is kind of like a portfolio of xl records yeah almost? kind of yeah. yeah it's it's really cool Hit, like here's all the artists yeah but doing what i want them to do kind it's of, like yeah. um it's like an indie version of now that's what i call music <laughs> but he's produced it all <laughs> yeah. i like that yeah like an in-house published like now that's what i call xl records yeah, yeah I like exactly it. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. I'd definitely recommend it if you want to hear more from artists you already like. Like Sanford, he obviously hasn't put anything out for a while. You can get your new Sanford tracks from this mm, rather than... fix on this. Yeah, yeah so you can, that, that's that's cool. Good, but just good. Just good. Just good. Mm, not... Doesn't deserve to win. No. My next one, I'm going to list these in the order that I actually listen to them. Uh, yeah, my good. second one, the second one I got is Sons of Kemet, and it's called Your Queen is a Reptile. Um, this is the token jazz album. Every year with the Mercury Prize, there seems to be a token jazz album. Uh, with Sons of Kemet, though, I listened to it and I heard like the first track. I was like, oh, there's some really nice saxophone playing. This is the token jazz act. This is going to bore the piss out of me. And it <laughs> did to begin with. It like The first track is like a, quite a long one and it went on for a while. And it's like, you know, I don't get jazz. Yeah. I don't get it. I, I, I can appreciate it as like an art for, as, a, as, a, as a genre, but it got a little bit boring. But then... Then out of nowhere came these like vocals, and I don't know who the vocalist is. I probably should have looked up who the vocalist is on that. Okay, so but what I will say is he sounds like Maxi Jazz of Faithless fame. Oh, okay. Yeah, the yeah. guy who does the, the Insomnia and Tarantula, those songs. It sounds a lot like him. It's kind of that spoken halfway between rap and um, this is poetry. Um, I've got a feeling that whoever the vocalist is is a full time vocalist because they don't <laughs> feature the because it's easy in every song as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's really interesting. It, it's it, it gave that jazz, that token jazz album, another layer for me and made it a little bit more interesting. Yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, it's still just the token jazz album. This is the the, the Jamie Cullen pick, isn't it? This <laughs> is what Jamie Cullen, one of the judges, would have picked. Yeah. This is that, and I can't have a strong opinion on it. 
I don't like it. I don't hate it. It's just boring, and I can it guarantee needed to be nominated by the sounds of it. Yeah, yeah. But it's not a winner. No, it's not a winner at all. It's just in our eyes. Anyway. No, it's just another. It's, it's like the trend of the Mercury Prize. It's filling those shoes, mm-hmm. which it always seems to do. I think they do that maybe just to get a wide array of things. Yeah, so they're not like funneling one. Like it's not just genre. In, yeah, because when we think about nominating people, we're always like. This album, this album, this album. Shit, that's very, very indie. Indie, yeah. So um, I, I can I can understand why they've selected this. It's a bit more gives it a bit more of a wide thing with what's happening in the UK music scene. But it won't win as the token jazz albums never do. Just like I'm sorry, but Nadine Shah will not win either. <laughs> Nadine- Good segue. Good segue. <laughs> well done. Nadine Shah um, with her second album, Holiday Destination. Not gonna not gonna win. I couldn't even make it all the way through. I'm sorry, hon. Um, no, she is n- normally Laura Marlin. If you dig up an album, you get nominated every bloody time, but not this year because she didn't bring out an album. But you know, do you show you took that place? It's very lo fi, a bit jazzy again. It's a bit droney. It's a bit oh, how do I explain it earlier? It's like a piece of art that you'd see in the National Gallery. But if you were blind and could only hear it, that's what it would be. So it's the audio description of modern art. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just couldn't get behind it. it you know, she's all right. I kind of get it, but it's not for me. I don't know what else to say, really. Female singer-songwriter, but there's another one in this category, but that's far better than this. So would you call it Nadine? Law. <laughs> fucking hell. No, sorry, the Dean Hun. No. Yeah, I mean to be honest, when I've been listening in the like, when you've been playing it in the background, making your notes and whatever, and no, I've heard it, I've, I've not I, got anything to say yeah, about it it's, either. It's just, eh. yeah, it's just, eh. it's just, eh. yeah. There's other singer songwriters out there. Yeah. Specifically, number three on my list. We'll move oh! on swiftly from that one. Georgia Smith, Lost and Found. Uh, man, she's good. She's See? fucking good. I wanted her. Unbelievably good. Um, I'll say my little bit and then I'll let you take over because oh. you've probably got a lot more to say. Um, I wanted to say But for my listen through of Lost and Found, I like how Georgia Smith blends genres really nicely. Oh, it, there's kind of... Cute. There's like threads of R&B. There's the singer-songwriter kind of thing. There's also mm. the hip-hop vibes like yeah. um, Blue Lights. Yeah. Flash, no? Flashing yeah. Lights? Blue Lights? What is it? It's blue Lights. Blue Lights. Is the kind of it's like a hip hop vibe to it. Um, with Georgia Smith as well, she's reworked that because obviously we've been um, been following it for quite a while now. Um, after seeing her at Latitude, like I sort of support Neo, and um, then finally she's come out with this absolutely banger of an album. Like literally every song is a good song. Yeah, there's you not do a bad not one on there. Skip. Just open up the album. I'm opening up the album. It is called Blue Lights. Blue Lights. They did rework it as well. They slowed it down a bit. Yeah, um, it's good though. It's good. And it, it flows well as well. So we're looking at the album, the track list now. And now it goes from Lost and Found, which is kind of a traditional R&B kind yeah, of... Yeah, into, into Teenage, teenage fantasy, fantasy. And the vocals on that. Teenage Fantasy, the vocals. Oh. That's another thing I've got down in my notes here. That For such a young age, what is she, 21? Yeah, Her, her range. Bab from Wolfsall. Black Country. All right. Fucking Brumoy. <laughs> Um, the the range that she's got is just unreal for someone of that age. Like she like she can hit she's the highs so and the lows. So talented. Yeah, it's really good. It's a strong album. It's a uh, it's very mature <laughs> for someone so young. Yeah. And it's it's definitely. Stunning. I can see where the personal journey thing comes in from what the Mercury Prize are looking for with this. I literally yeah. cannot wait to see her in the Albert Hall, Manchester, in that decadent building with her voice. Oh. It's going to sound phenomenal. Every track should be released because it's fabulous. I want her to play this album in its entirety in October, please. Thank you, Georgia. You are a very strong contender for the winner for me, um, unlike Lily Allen for me. <laughs> yeah, so your number three is... <laughs> We're just going on a bit of a female crusade here. Yeah. Like, um, Lily, like... What's the album called, first off? It's called it? No Shame, and she has no shame. Uh, she's changed quite a lot since she was younger, hasn't she? She was a bit of a gobshite. Yeah. Um, she's always had like a bit of a bad rap, I suppose. She's been away four years on a four year hiatus, come back, been nominated. To me, she sounds the same. The music hasn't changed that much. You know, she's still moaning about something or 
<laughs> so where's the wind? There's, there's always some fucking problem that you've got to fucking talk about. Yeah, and I'm like, oh great, I don't. Where is me? I don't, don't get. I don't care for it. I'm like, I get that. I, maybe it's pop. I'm, I really tried. I was like, I need to like it because I need to be better at liking things that I don't like. Well, I just don't like it. Or giving them a chance. I gave it a chance. I listened to it um, twice, three times. You know, if it doesn't grab me on first listen. I do yeah. give you the benefit of the doubt, and I will try again. I mean, there are some albums that have been a slow burner, but I'm not rushing back to press play. I'm actually it made me want to listen to her first album. We um had, I was listening to Alfie yeah. a second ago. Didn't yeah, I? um, I think w- when I've heard little bits of this, as you've been playing it in the background, um, I I feel like uh, her first album was strong. It was solid, so good, and then she kind of went on a weird little bender with the other two yeah is this the fourth one now the fifth fourth. one whatever and this seems like a little bit of a ret- whatever it is but this who, seems like who a, cares yeah who cares at this point it seems like a little bit of a, of a return to form but not quite like yeah. almost almost like it's like there's yeah. a bit more maturity there so she's not like going full tilt yeah um, not as gobby or anything like that yeah, yeah but, but at the same time it's still that flat Every song sounded similar. Yeah, like She's a good first, vocalist. Her first album was so good. Like I said to you, it was like kind of that, you know, when Kate Nash came about, like that kind of female Jamie T vibe. Like, it was fun. This is a bit, I've got on my high horse about my own sort of... Problems that you've caused yourself. Yeah, yeah. and, you know, fair play, no shame, but... It's weird. Good try. Good try. All right, moving on, moving on quickly from Lily Allen to one of... One of the uh, probably the most important, <laughs> one of the most important artists of the of our generation, and probably a parents' generation that has somehow diver- produced this. The wrong brother was nominated. <laughs> the wrong brother was nominated. It is Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds with Who Built the Moon. Who, now, who did build the moon, Noel? Who built the moon, Liam? <laughs> it's this album is experimental and it's brave for I think it's brave for him take it ticks up. All the bo- on, yeah. <laughs> it ticks all the boxes for the Mercury Prize. Yeah, it's experimental, Te- yeah. and it's it's very brave of him to be experimental to try and move away from that Britpop sound. But ultimately, it didn't fucking work. It's a it's yeah. a mixed bag of things. There are like those weird, like four or five minute yeah. instrumental tracks that it's don't make any day. sense. Yeah. Beautiful. Fuck off, Noel! Yeah, there's there's those kind of songs, those instrumental ones that drag out. And there's also like the more Oasis sounding songs. Like the last song on the album is a bit more of a slow Oasis sounding. I'm song. pretty sure that's a straight riff. Yeah, exactly. Like it could have you put that on one of the Oasis records yeah, and it fits straight it on Morning in. Glory and then you got that new psychedelic stuff. It's just like when you're not Pink Floyd. Like, calm down. Yeah, like kind of Pink Floyd, Tame Impala kind of stuff that he's trying to do. I, I like that he's trying new things, but he didn't really settle on a sound for me. And it was a bit all over the place. Like some I would like, and then it'd move into a really boring instrumental one. Do you know what Noel needed? He needed his band to go that shit. Yeah, and no one did. Someone needed yeah. to put him in his place, flick him back in his corner, get him right in his studio to actually cut some of those shit songs off the album. Because there are a few okay ones, maybe yeah. maybe four. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think if if you'd have, like if you'd have done what you just said, like got rid of the instrumental stuff. Like I get the instrumental stuff if you're going to make a fully instrumental or album. Or bring it out as a B side when yeah. you release a single. Yeah. If you really love it that much, don't but... open your brand new album with that mm. with a five minute instrumental. It's like it's silly. It's like a, you know when they walk out on stage, it's like an intro track mm. that should last thirty seconds, but it doesn't. Um, really, it just results in what can only be described as a bit of a boring mess. So it's just a mess. Oh. And it's a shame because what he did for music is unparalleled, really. Yeah. There's no one else like that. So the next one is a bit of a rando one. So I'm going for all the ones I didn't know first. So King Cruel, mm. The Ooze. Mm. I was pleasantly surprised. I had heard of King Cruel before. He has got a couple of albums out. I think it's a he rather than a band. Um, I think he goes under a few different aliases, Yeah, he goes actually. under a few names, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think his name's Jordan. Maybe. Useful. It's completely irrelevant, really. Yeah, a um, bit. <laughs> So, I really like his track called Dumb Surfer. Really cool. Really, that's what really grabbed my attention. Really, really like that song. And it kind of repeats it over again, like Dumb Surfer, Dumb Surfer. Got a lot of saxophones, a bit jazzy again. It's very poetic. It's very, like, woozy, very... Nice lounge music, like while I was sitting and doing my work and just tinkering around on my laptop and like having it on in the background. I don't think it's something that I'd want to go out my way to put on. 
um, I'm more of a fan of it. I like yeah. it a lot. I'd like that kind of music. I I do like um, just that kind of background music. Just yeah, it it's on. very soft. It's soft kind of. It reminded me of Bonobo a little bit. A little a bit. bit. Of Bonobo, yeah. But his voices, vocals are very nice. They're very yeah. Um, ghost poet as well. A little yeah, ghost poet. Ghost definitely. poet is a bit more. It's his voice, man. It's really good. It's very. Um, it's, it's got. Quite subtle, a, yeah, it's subtle. very like mm. a nice husk to it as well. Yeah, very. Yeah. I, I, think, I don't feel like I've had enough time to dig at it. No, but on a. But just, I would go out of all the ones so far. I mean, everything recorded, I do like it's a bit of a compilation. But at all, all the artists so far that I hadn't heard of, hadn't really listened to their album. This is the one that I probably go back to the most. Mm, I think this is my favourite of the new ones I haven't heard of. I think it's one of the stronger ones as well. Yeah, it's list, definitely really. up there. It's not. Mm. It is up there. It is mid rank. I don't think it'll win. Don't think it'll win. It's top four for top four for me. Mm. We're not ranking them. That'll take too long. Should have done that. In the first yeah, place. we should have done that in the first place. Uh, yeah, so very good. That is like it. Poetic, groovy, jazz, elevator music. Nice. 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 Right, number five on my list. Everything, everything. Uh, a fever dream. The album's called. Um, it's not bad. It's yeah. not bad, but it's not um, the album that they did before. Uh, Get to heaven. That was a lot better than this. That was so good. That was a really, really good album. So good that album was. This is a really, really okay album. You can never tell what he's saying. No, but I don't care. His vocals are insane. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I I feel like A Fever Dream is a little bit tedious, a little bit boring. Apart from the singles, Can't Do and Desire, they're just not that riveting. They're not interesting. You said Desire and all I had was in my head then was... Years and years. Years and years, Desire. Yes, it is, Desire. Yeah, but no, apart from those singles that got released, they're just not catchy. It's, you can't, you don't get it in your head. Whereas I completely with... forgot this album was even released. Yeah, exactly. And but... to be honest, it was released last year. Yeah, it's really... August, yeah, yeah, it has yeah. just slid in. Just slid in. It's a fucking cop-out, mm. in my opinion. Uh, it's a shame because Get to Heaven was really good. The first like four or five opening tracks of Get to Heaven really stick in your head. Yeah. These don't... They all sound very similar. It's To me, it's a little bit of a like step back yeah uh, it's not bad it's just not it's like they bunged out an album way yeah. too quickly yeah it's just they've done an alt j it's that's not alt j yeah did. that's it that's exactly what they've done they've done an alt j they've got one like i don't know this might how I many three three now, there? yeah four but no get, get to heaven was their like pinnacle they'd like they hit a fucking peak with that yeah because that was so much it better than really their debut good. as well so and, much better and then they squeeze this one out and it's not that great it's all right but i will say something that jonathan higgs the vocalist the lead singer his like vocals are as strong as ever they're fucking insane like what, what, that, man, what that man can do is unreal he gets so high yeah, how he gets so high but also like so please, deep can you just try and get high no i'm not gonna try and get please <laughs> <laughs> that's my impression of jonathan higgs but no, it, it's, it's really sick it's like it's like a decent sam smith yeah yeah i'd really like him if this came before get to heaven then that would make sense. Yeah, because it's development. But, oh my god, that legs. Like yeah, because then you'd see development from this to get to heaven. But the, I feel like it came out the wrong way around. This won't win the Mercury Prize. I'll be fucking shocked if it does. Uh, so, what, yeah. what is what is your uh, second to last? Your penultimate. Mine is Florence and the Machine. High as hope. Well, you know what? I bloody love Florence. She's fantastic. Anyway, it's her fourth studio album, third to have been nominated for the Mercury Prize. So this is just telling me that no matter what Florence can do, the Mercury Prize is always going to bunger in mm. the top 12. She's great. Absolutely phenomenal. Her song, Hung, Hunger, 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 Hunger. Um, it's uplifting. Um, it's amazing. I mean, people did get it confused with "We all need a Honda." We all need a, a I can't Hyundai. Listen to, I can't <laughs> listen to that song now. I can't listen to that song now without thinking about that. About oh, we all need a Honda. That, we all need a Honda. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no, you don't. You definitely don't. Need we a Honda. all need a Honda. <laughs> It's so silly, but no, it's, it's a good track. So good. Um, it's she's changed a lot, really, from her. Like, if you think that back to her lungs when she was, um, is it Rabbit Heart? Why did I have Rabbit Foot? Well, there's a lot of beating of the drum, a bit like a bit more like woodland tribal bollocks, mm. um, a bit chanty, a bit. That was Florence back in the day, but she's very um, grand. There's a lot of strings. There's you know, it's quite orchestral. Um, there's a lot of highs like those she builds up there's a lot of uh, her hitting that high note and really stretching it like she does so well and I think that's what makes Florence so fantastic is her vocal range and her ability to 
even the way she sings, if you close your eyes, it's theatrical. And then when you see it on stage, you see the movement. Mm, it's even more theatrical yeah, on stage. I'd yeah. love to see in the studio. I reckon mm. she's like floating around in a no shoes. All over and, the place. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I like she's this. A, just, it's free spirited. It's... I like this album. It's a good one. Uh, I think it's a lot more cheery. It is cheery. It's, it's a bit a more, more upbeat, upbeat than what was the other one? The one um, how it. big, how blue, how beautiful. Yeah, that one was sad. Like you couldn't listen to that without yeah. feeling bad for it. But this one seems a bit more uplifting, like you said. Yeah, and I think that's kind of um, recently she's brought out that book, hasn't she? Um, Poetry book. Well, it's it's a beautiful um, burgundy book. It's got all the lyrics from the first album, second album, third album. They're all split into chapters and the chapters of the albums and then the last bits so all the poetry it's really nice got lovely illustrations in and i kind of get that sense that maybe this was her plan not all along but she did lungs they went into ceremonials and how big and be beautiful like you said it's very sad and this is very uplifting so it kind of it's like a journey it's kind of mm. ended again this go, it goes to that personal journey thing that you yeah. know, the prize are looking for this is her conquering something because mm. i believe that i read somewhere that she had a problem with alcohol yeah and this was one of the first albums she I wrote th- where it's completely sober. It's completely sober, yeah. yeah. So that's a good thing. So I suppose that kind of leaks over into the, the songs themselves. It's a kind of an accomplishment for us. Yeah. So the, there's a bit more of a We all need a note. hunger. Like, we mm. all need something to kind of... We need a fucking beer, mate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's always something that we're all kind of obsessing over or something's taking its toll on us in some yeah. strain or another. But I've got to say, I loved the album. As soon as it came out, listened to it, loved it. Well, it's like, it's another Florence record. It's sick. Um singles before the album came out really built it up album came out after a couple of weeks I kind of forgot about it so it did get shelved mm. it did get shelved mm. I'm afraid and then only because I've had to start listening to it again I've really enjoyed listening to it it's yeah. very it's a very summer album it's a very like feel good maybe um, you think that's hurt it a little bit because she's known for that kind of more emotional emotionally wrought songs rather than these happy songs you think that's made it a little more forgettable no, um, I think it's made her more appealing. If anything, like oh, okay. it's made her a bit more poppy. It's made her a bit more like um, accessible. Yeah, mm. it's opened her up a bit. I think it's probably um, like here, we tried to get tickets. Yeah, didn't, didn't get tickets but for some reason. Just a little bit forgettable. Yeah, mm. shame. Which is a shame. But yeah. strong contender. Right, next one. My last one. My final one. Uh, one of my favourites. Wolf Alice with what was it called? A Visions of Life. Visions, Visions of, of life. life. Yeah, Visions of Life. Yeah. I like this one. It's a very, very good second album. Very good second album. There's a nice flow between the songs. Because um, what I like, what I liked about the first one is it was heavy. It was a punk rock, punk rock kind of album. And yeah. but they all sounded very samey. Mm. Not samey bad in a bad way, but it was one kind of sound. With this one, they kind of flow between heavy and soft quite oh, a lot. Don't delete um, the kisses. Yeah, don't delete the kisses. I like in the album how it goes from that really heavy Yuck Fu song, that really like old school punk rock song yeah. that would perf- fit perfectly onto... The first album, Definitely. and then it goes into beautifully unconditional, which is like uh, a proper funky little little record. That is really nice. I, I it's, really it's do just, like this album. Yeah, it's a perfect flow. It's it, it, it is really good. The varied sound is beneficial. It shows progress. It shows yeah. development, which is what the prize is looking for. Um, Ellie Roswell, Rosal, Ellie Rousel, Ellie Rousel. Yeah, her vocals Roswell. are her vocals again. Like go really well with that heavy guitar sound. She yeah. can scream her fucking lungs out, but also. Have that really soft vocal, like really subtle vocals, especially on um, beautifully unconditional. What I've always appreciated about Wolf Alice is they do take a, a hell of a lot of time to craft their uh, sound and oh, their yeah. albums. Like I can remember when they bought Bros out um, way back before they bought an album out, um, and then they bought out the is it Blush EP. Blush EP, yeah. There was some then, year, oh, like years almost between those. Yeah, there? it was, and it was so long. And then we, I think we got another EP, mm. and then we finally got the debut. Um, the debut has been out ages now. I can't believe mm. it. It's a good couple of years. Mm. Um, and they really do take that time to. They're not going to just go back in the studio, bang out another album, and hope for the best. Like especially second albums, I do think are incredibly important, especially in this day and age. Yeah. Um, just because if you don't get the second album right, it like. Who's going to pursue for the third? Exactly. Yeah. I think they, yeah, they could have, they could have easily just banged out another record that sounded like the first one, and that would yeah, have been, that like, wouldn't have been bad. But I don't think it would have shown development. Whereas that's this, what, yeah. with that more kind of like woozy sound, a bit more psychedelic, mm. it's it's a lot better than just having I complete think, punk music. It makes me sad because I feel like they're going on a bit of a hiatus. I'd, I'd say do it, do mm. it, like go away, like write another album and make it as because they've already got two strong ones, two solid ones, and they've. 
worked really hard over a long extended don't period of time. Don't compromise your music. Yeah, don't compromise your style. Don't compromise the way you work in order to just shit out an album. They haven't done that. Don't think of the royalties. No, what they've done is they've produced re- two really good, really strong albums. One that is sh- like one that the first one that is just perfect, and then the second one, which is even better, I'd say, because yeah. it just shows so much development and so much um, change in their style, which is good. Anyway, yeah. speaking of changes in styles and being brave, let's get on to your final one, shall we? <laughs> so we agreed Daryl shouldn't have this one because he gushed over this album. Yeah, I like this one a lot. I mean, I like this one a lot. And we do talk about this Yorkshire band. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Mm. So it is the sixth studio album from the Arctic Monkeys. I mean, the album title is a mouthful in itself, Tranquility, Base Hotel and Casino. It is definitely ticking all the boxes on self-development, personal development, issues, this, that and the other, love, hate, whatever. It's very futuristic. It's very influenced um, a lot by... I suppose in a way science going back into I like older music very much so straight off the back burner from the last Shadow Puppets record a lot of Arctic Monkeys fans were very disappointed by this album um, and I can only say if you were disappointed in this album you probably I look like I wasn't wearing any pants but I am actually wearing shorts <laughs> tie dye shorts a lot of people if they didn't like this album at first because I can remember listening to it on the train and thinking this is bloody genius this is I really liked it on first listen I liked it on first I, listen I didn't really second guess it um, I don't know whether it's because it's Arctic Monkeys and maybe they can do no wrong but it's not easy it's it not an hot, easy album it, yeah yeah. the more you it's listen challenging. to it yeah. the better it gets 100% agree with that 100% um, first listen if you're an average run of the mill Arctic Monkeys fans no offence guys we know you're out there Um you're going to go, what the fuck? Where is Mardi Born? Where is Teddy Picker? Where is Are You Mine? Mm. You know, bands have to develop and you've got to understand this. Like, you've still got those elements with four stars out of five. The heavy bass line is still there. Yeah. You know? um, she looks like fun as well. She still looks like that fun, yeah. Traditional Arctic Monkey sound. Yeah. yeah, just because you can't bang out a chorus doesn't mean it's not good. Yeah. Um, and I remember seeing all the uproar on there, especially because they announced their tour dates before their ticket, um, before the album came out. People mm. were like, oh my God, I'm going to sell their tickets. I mean, we saw them two weeks ago on tour. Love they them. Still played so a load good. of bangers. They hardly played any of Tranquility Base yeah, Hotel Casino, which was a bit disappointing. Yeah, same. They played about four or five tracks. But it was their personal development. And if any of you listen to The Last Shadow Puppets, it completely makes yeah, sense. It, it fl- yeah, it's the a- work that he'd been doing with Alexandra Saviour, yeah. um, working with obviously Miles Kane again. Yeah. It really lended itself to, to, this, to album. this album. Yeah, I think, I think the work that Alex Turner did with The Last Shadow Puppets on that album yeah. really fed into this. And I think, didn't they say that? Um, he wrote Star Treatment, mm. the first track on this album, and was going to put it on TLSP. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. He, I'm pretty sure it was well, that he, one. Initially, he, he wrote, wrote all... at the same time with Alexandra Savior. Yeah, yeah, he initially wrote all this, and it was never meant to be an Arctic Monkeys record. And then they obviously mm. presented it to uh, was it James Cook? Yeah, it was James Cook. James Jamie Cook. Cook. Jamie Cook. Yeah. Um, and he was like, "Oh, this is cool. Let's show it the lads." And then they yeah. all put stuff together and added the guitar riffs and stuff, and really developed it into something. Yeah, and that's multi-layered. That- yeah, it was really nice because we went to the Zachary Michael exhibition when we were down in London after the tour, and it really kind of like made sense on mm. how this whole process was, um, how this album came about, like the, the way they went to France, they spent time together. Like they are a very, they're not just a band; they are foremost friends, yeah, and yeah. they do have fun with it. And mm. you know, it's no song is a bad song on this either. Like. Nope. It's very um, narrative. It follows on from one another. I really want to go and see this album in its entirety. Same. It's, song by song. It's essentially a concept album, isn't it? Really? Definitely. It's more of a, it it's, tells more of a narrative from Alex Turner. It, it, it's, yeah. it ties in with that science fiction. It's insti- inspired by Stanley Kubrick. You can see that in the videos yeah. that they produced that it's are very... looking inward, but also looking outward. Yeah. Um, it's looking at maybe their life from every possible angle, from every possible mm. point of view, and just the world around them in general. Yeah. I, I think it. I think it's great. It's art in every single form. He's thought a lot about the lyrics, the way the music goes, even to build in this 
Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino yeah, the, the model. Artwork. Yeah, yeah. Um, the way that the album opens, like any of you that have bought the vinyl, the the way that you t- open the pages and there's the t- um, the tissue paper, but then there's a window. Yeah. It's all very thought out. It's- every, every aspect of this has been intricately put together, even down to when we saw them in London when they were on stage. Yeah. And they basically, what it looked like anyway from where we were, is like they carpeted the stage to make it look like a hotel lobby yeah which is what this whole they album is about this mimicking... whole this whole album is about the tranquility base hotel and casino yeah. and the stories in there well they have the yeah. lighting rig um in the same shape yeah. they had the little twizzle you do that's in <laughs> like a <laughs> cube <laughs> disco ball yeah, yeah they yeah. have that pop-up for that track yeah and... it's, it's very well thought out i can understand why people don't like it because yeah. it's not tr- like a lot of the tracks aren't traditionally put together they're not traditionally yeah. manufactured like pop songs like a lot of the choruses aren't the same. Yeah. They go off beat. Yeah. Um, every song is more of a journey. It kind of starts off one way with a certain tune and then goes another way. It yeah. doesn't rhyme the lyrics no. a lot. It's very yeah. like thought. At some points it's kind of spoken word. Yeah, it's, um, it's very weird. Even the way they presented the, the lyric book yeah. that we've got over there, the lyric book is set out like a novel mm. rather than a lyric sheet. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. It's great. We love them. There's a lot gone into this album. Yeah. Um, if you couldn't tell, we really, really like we it. We really, really like yeah. those um, cookies. So let's let's stop there before we carry on gushing about Alex Turner. And I want, what I want to do now is your top six. So you take your six. My six. Yeah. I know, I know this is a stupid question. What's your favourite of your six? <laughs> my my favourite... So who, do I, who out of my six deserves to win? Tell you what, pick two. Arctic Monkeys. Yep. And... I would say I would say um, I don't know. Two is quite hard because I, I've really got to say this: that my other acts are really middle of the range. As much as I love Florence, I think she's like I said, it's strangely forgettable. All right then. So I think I'd put maybe King Crawl up there just because he was the only other act that I really liked and would go back to, mm. and I think maybe deserves a bit more credit. And hopefully, this could then push his career a bit more. And- yeah. Yeah, so your top two would be Arctic Monkeys and King Cruel. That's nice. Yeah. At least you got a new one. My top two, pretty straightforward. Um, Georgia Smith, probably my number one. Uh, I'd, I'd rank her as the, like, the second most favourite uh, overall. And then Wolf Alice as well. I'd put Wolf yeah. Alice up there. Um, I would really like Wolf Alice to, yeah. um, as a strong contender, but I don't think they are. I do think the top two are definitely, for me anyway, Georgia Smith and Arctic Monkeys. No questions asked. They're the best two albums on that list. In my, in my opinion, and it's like maybe slightly biased. I do I try. Think it's, yeah, slightly biased because yeah. we're such a big fan of Arctic Monkeys. But and of Georgia Smith, like we yeah. followed her career for a good couple of years now, um, and it was so good. Yeah, but I agree. I agree as well. Like thinking of your six as well, I think my favourite is Arctic Monkeys. It has to be mm. the winner for me. It's the album that's meant so much for me personally. So oh. two strongest albums, ones we want to win. I'd be happy with either either of them, Arctic Monkeys or Georgia Smith. That's, Georgia Smith. That's through the grooves prediction. Is that the prediction? Put a bet on. Put a bet on Arty Monkeys. Don't say... Probably won't win. No. That's not win. People that we think should have been nominated, though, that missed the yeah, cut. Yeah, so albums that missed the cut or weren't put in at all, which is a, which we personally think. They probably wouldn't fit in with what yeah. the judges think, but these are our personal picks. Declan McKenna. We yep. have a bit of Declan. Number one. Uh, I am gutted that that wasn't in there. I Personally, one of my favourite albums from the past 12 months. Yeah, best um, one of the best gigs I went to last year, yep. easily. Uh, yep. I love him. I like what he stands for. Very good, very good. Um, and his songwriting is amazing. Solid his for... lyrics are... Yeah. Again, he's another one of those young artists that are incredibly talented. Yeah. It's a shame he wasn't included in this list. If he was included in this list, I think he'd be my number two. Oh, he'd yeah. be Georgia Smith for me, personally. Yeah, he's it such so a talented good. songwriter. Uh, uh, yep. Who's next? Um, Liam Gallagher. Yep, yeah, it should have been Liam, not Noel. Yeah. Uh, Liam, Liam, I think, with that album, with his first solo album, uh, it was a lot more put together than Noel's. Oh. It was a bit more thematically like correct. Uh, it was just so everything good. Everything flowed it, nicely. It was a lot more growth for Liam as a person as well, yes. I think. like He stopped being... Uh, he's still a bit of an arsehole, but he's not as much of an arsehole. Yeah, I think a lot of the songs as well are him reaching out to his brother a little bit. Yeah. Um, Fingers crossed for that Oasis reunion. Oh, my God. But yeah, I, Even if Oasis never get back, yeah. I just want them to be on good terms, to be honest, because, mm. you know... Uh, no, it's good. It's a good, nice, nostalgic album. It's very Oasis sounding, yeah. which it's going to be. Um, I think it should have been in there rather than Knowles, but obviously I put here over shitty Knowles. Over shitty Knowles. <laughs> I, th- I think the reason it wasn't though is because it did sound so similar to what 
that's coming for it. Yeah, it's yeah. not that much development musically. No. Personally, for Liam, I think it is. Yeah. But yeah. Another one for me, The Magic Gang, um, yes. self-titled The Magic Gang on Yala Records. Absolutely love them. Such a good first debut. It's just kind of putting indie music back on the map in its more traditional guitar band kind of form. And yeah, I loved it. And the modern day Beach Boys. Yeah, they've got... Fucking brilliant. They've got mm. such a... Um, and they just switch it up a bit. They don't like... They have the basses singing and oh, like I just love it. And the last one, shame songs of praise, which has been album of the month for about six months. We really need to change that. We really need to change, get that out of there and change it. <laughs> we will next we will. time you come. The Mercury Prize winner, winner will be in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. The Mercury Prize winner will be in there. But yeah, shame. So it's going to be Arctic Monkeys, and we already have that album. Yes, yeah. so we don't have to spend money. Perfect. Shame <laughs> songs of praise. It, I really surprised this wasn't in it. It was a really good. I punk was record, really yeah. pissed off. Like a good punk record. Uh, I think. One of the reasons it probably wasn't is because the Mercury Prize this year, according to them, is about personal development and personal... Well, political. They have That's a lot of thing. political stance. That's the thing. I think they wanted to avoid polit- politicising this Mercury Prize because that album is very political. Very. Very, very pro- political. And they're very vocal about it when they're on uh, yeah, stage. Yes, <laughs> they are, yeah. And I think that is what maybe the Mercury Prize kind of shied away from that sound, which is a shame because... Yeah. <laughs> shame. Because it, it belongs shame. on that list. 100% belongs on that list as one of the most important artists this year. I yeah. genuinely think that. So winners are going to be Arctic Monkeys Arctic or Monkeys. Dr- Drudge Smith. Probably going to be Arctic Monkeys. Um, so yeah, that's our first real episode of Through the Groove. That's it. Yeah, for episode number six of Through the Groove. Our Mercury Prize predictions, predictions, and like talking about the albums. I hope you liked it. Um, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Do the thumbs up thing. Subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram. We're all over the place. Share to your mom, sister, dog walkers, best friends, next door neighbours. Yeah, do that. Share that. And um, come <laughs> and let us know what you think will win the Mercury Prize. Are there any albums that you think should be in there that aren't in there? And do you think we're completely wrong and that actually... Novelist, novelist is great. Is, is great. He's not. No. He's really not. Um, but actually, it'd be really interesting to know what your stance is on some of these albums and the fact... Um, or if... There was somebody who absolutely missed our radar of people we sh- thought should yeah. be nominated someone, and didn't make the cut for the 12. Yeah, someone completely new. Because we're, we're all about that, aren't we? And they've we're got all about to that be new music. British. Oh, yeah, got to be British. They've yeah. got to be British. Yeah, in case that wasn't fucking obvious. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>